Alrighty then, welcome to my latest Let's Play, Ground Zeroes. I tried this before, but the recording failed when my computer crashed. And right here I'm showing my best time that I've ever had, which, even though I was quite proud of it, wasn't that great as it turns out, but it's probably as good as you can do without relying on headshots. Told us everything. Don't worry, I kept my word. He didn't suffer long. Here. You earned it. How does it feel to play the traitor? No more war games. You're a real man now, soldier. Give my regards to your boss when you get home. Ten days ago, we got reports that Paz was still alive. She survived. She was rescued by a Belizean fisherman who found her drifting in the Caribbean. So what's the plan? Silence her before we're compromised? No. I've got something else in mind. Our friends at Cypher suspect Paz could be a double agent. She's being held for interrogation at a camp on the southern tip of Cuba. Black site. Nice. A slice of American pie on communist soil and out of U.S. legal jurisdiction. The upcoming inspection of Mother Base has to be connected somehow. The timing's too perfect. The UN's nuclear inspection. My guess is they're trying to corroborate Paz's leak. We're an army without a nation. Word of our capabilities gets out, and we'll have the whole world out to shut us down. Having an American private intelligence agency involved is bad news. Cypher's the ones who sent Paz to us in the first place. She knows their true nature. Right. Pass is our only link to Cypher. If she's still alive, we need her on our side.
So who's the other target? That would be Chico. He's being held in the same area as Paz. Last radio contact was 40 hours ago. Find them both. Bring him back alive. Enter the compound from the South Cliff. Secure Chico and Paz, then report back from the rendezvous point. Send a chopper from across the Cuban border. You should be back at Mother Base in time for lunch. You'll probably just miss our guests. The only catch is you go in solo. The politically sensitive nature of the mission needs backup is not an option. Fine. I like some alone time now and then. And now we're actually into the main gameplay. Footage is being spliced between two recordings. One for the gameplay and one for the story and character. This was done to make the cycles a little more consistent and make the replaying process much less annoying. To climb an obstacle, press the action button. There's a guard up there. If you're going to eliminate him, use a gun. That's kind of a weird thing you can do right there. You can dive out, but if the dive is too far out, he'll just auto-adjust and you'll land on your feet. It actually does save a lot of recovery. This is a little thing you can do here for consistency, because the biggest trouble I've had with this run is trying to get really good headshots, which is... A lot of the really fastest runs you'll get is just depends on how accurate they are. That shot, for example, I've, I've hit that shot faster, but I've also missed the shot dozens and dozens of times. So this is where the headshot game gets really, really important. I'm also marking enemies ahead of time to see their outline for much easier headshots later. I'm trying to stick up and then get down the enemy as many enemies as I can. I know that it's going to be a problem if they get spotted, but it does mean that I get some more trank rounds for later. All right. So now in this run, I'm trying to minimize the amount of time I have to spend just waiting around. So I'm already calling the chopper even before I get this extra target. And I'm getting this extra prisoner really just for the sake of completionism. I'm getting the extra prisoner here, who is supposed to inform you of an extra route. And of course I get stuck in the walls of that little box. Lovely. I'll be inserting select audio that is unheard in this run. A prisoner. You gonna help him? 
If you want to extract him, carry him to the RV and call in the chopper. The rain was coming down just as hard the day we met Paz. Previously, Big Balls and his Soldiers Without Borders were contacted by Ramon Galvez Zadornov and Paz Ortega Andreza to act on Costa Rica's behalf due to excessive military action as a proxy nation of the Cold War. As extra incentive to investigate and drive out the operatives, they supplied intel inferring that the boss was still alive. Go home, boss. As it turns out, the boss was still dead, but her mind being replicated by an unrequited secret lover slash stalker of hers, Strangelove. Strangelove and Huey Emmerich helped build unmanned machines of progressively larger size for Goldman, the craziest man to ever live. Along the way, he came into contact with a pantsless French woman and two siblings from a small militia, Amanda and the master of monster knowledge, Chico. Zadornov ended up being a traitor and was killed after failing to rocket punch Big Boss. Paz ended up being a traitor. All the machines were destroyed, including a bright pink metal gear built by Huey and MS7, driven by Paz in a J-pop bikini final showdown. Huey and Strangelove joined the team as Miller successfully predicted 30 years of technical and political advancements. This mercenary business we built, someday it's going to be a new driving force in the world economy, a paradigm shift from counter-communism to counter terrorism and war will become a business clients all over the world who need our services all while building up their little home on the ocean i only want peace for my country <laughs> i can't believe we ever bought that cover story after Paz tried to steal zeke from us we watched her get pulled beneath the waves there was one thing i kept asking myself which was the real boss and which was the lie mr miller is Quite prone to just interrupting everyone else talking. This is actually an unoptimal strategy, and as is this, I'm only holding the triangle button. If you if you mash it, you will go through that much quicker. This is a bit unoptimal. If you just leave him here if, uh, and know that you'll come back, you can save some time and just come back here later. Guessing you didn't kill me just to save my ass, right? Inside the admin building. Here's the drainage channel. <laughs> Getting caught on there. A very common problem I kept having when I was doing that was, uh, or when I was using the Jeep, which I'm gonna, uh, which I get for just one reason, and that is this. What I do here is a safer strategy than normal. I wait in the box to eventually hold up enemies walking in my direction. The optimal strategy would be to crawl down the hill and hit two perfect headshots on the first try in a small time window before they run up and spot me. With no reflex mode and harder difficulty, this is a run killer. This strategy here, even though it is a safer option, it is not a... It is not supposed to happen this way. What was originally supposed to happen was only one guy was supposed to come up here. But the other one, he decided, oh yeah, I'm going to spot you and uh, I'm going to come up and chase you. And so it had, it forced me to alternate my strategy a bit or, al or alter my strategy a bit. Uh, I go downhill a little bit and then remember, oh crap, in other playthroughs when I've let these guys down here, then it resulted in, oh yeah, they get, they get uh, recovered later on from the guy who checks out this site, so. Using whatever ammo I have on me, I try to take out this guy just dealing with the rubble. It will, it may lead to some other problems because even if this guy is knocked out, eventually his CP will call him and say, give me a sit rep. And that's not a, that's not a rep of sit ups, it's actually a situation, uh, Representation. I, well, I don't know what the hell that stands for. I'm sure the first part is situation. This guy is also a really tricky shot because of the fence, everything that can get in the way, and in general also because he kind of he he doesn't stand out enough. And there are 
if you just hit any of the bars, any of the fence, and just like bounce off it, he could potentially just call the CP and put everything in alert status, which can make things really rugged. At this point, I am losing time here because I'm just crawling only because he took so long to pass out. And now here's where the long, long, long prisoner extraction process takes place. So this involves just picking up all these prisoners and then taking them to the late to the nearest cove, because inevitably I will have to rescue Chico out of the nearby cage, but. I'm also gonna get more points by getting the rest of the prisoners, and it's easier just to do this with them already there, especially with the strategy I'm going to use. For all of these guys, I will be showing a little bit of audio clips for to just complete the sentences they were telling. <laughs> You'll notice that I'm constantly looking uphill, and the reason I'm doing that when I'm getting rid of these cages is just in case, because I don't know for sure, just in case the guys who I stuck up, if they get recovered by somebody else. Because that means, for one thing, the rest of the base is going to be on alert, but secondly, I got to put them back in their place and knock them back down. Oh, So anyway, for each of these prisoners, I believe you get something like 3,500 points added to the end score. Now, that's a lot by itself anyway, but if you can do this while being relatively fast, like my fastest time, as I show, saw in the earlier, is sub-20 minutes. Plus, if you use no reflex, which makes this mission much more difficult, but it will give you more points, it makes it you just get a crazy, crazy amount of points. With that, all the prisoners have been collected. The next cutscene is slightly altered as there are no other prisoners to freak out Big Boss. Chico, it's me. No! No! Go away! Go away! Get off me! Chico, Get off! Keep it down! Go away! Chico, calm down.
I got Chico. And Paz? Not here. Are you sure? Pretty sure. Is Chico able to walk? Hold on. Surprisingly. It's like, I think they just didn't want to have a MIG. It's like, okay, yeah, that's kind of unfair. It's like, then you have to have the reflex mode on. It'd be freaking amazing if that was just like, if he just whispered on, in his ear, just like, say the password, salute, password accepted. You earned it. Motherfucker was my Walkman anyway. I already owned it. You just took it from me. She, I really don't get the supposed symbolism of the fucking auxiliary cable put into his goddamn sleep? chest. Jesus. What was the no point of that? War games. You're a real man now, soldier. I was always hombre nuevo. Realmente. Uh, hombre nuevo. Yeah, Jesus Christ. I still haven't gotten an answer to that. Give my regards to your boss when you get home. Okay, so they're basically hinting to the player that yes, this is a trap ahead of time. Okay, this song is actually written by, it says right down, uh, Inio Maricone. Inio Maricone is actually the guy who wrote all the music. Actually, is it a guy or a woman? I can't remember. Um, but, um, th that person wrote the music to The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, and the, the rest of the Dollars Trilogy. Fucking golden, man. Pass was still alive. She survived. She was rescued. Ah, Jesus. Yeah, I forgot. Uh, I always forget this, because, like, this snake voice, uh, it's so different, because it's Kiefer Sutherland and not David Hayter. But it, yeah, I'm not gonna sh shit on it forever, because I haven't heard him in the, because he doesn't get that much time to talk, but he's just so unmemorable. I don't, maybe Hideo Kojima is just a huge fan of 24 or something. And that's where they decided... Screw technological restrictions, I'm making whatever fucking game I want. Skullface! I don't really know the full intents of this ability. I mean, it feels like they're just going full, blow, full blown monster heal a la Volgan. But, yeah, I will comment on this. State of your name, mate. It's just like, oh, what do, what do I have on my head? A skull? So I'll name myself after that. I am Mr. Skullface now. Xoff. So obviously this is supposed to be like a fake fox. It just I guess it's their antithesis, if you will, or just like a hunt they're hunting. It's like we're hunting you. From across the Cuban border. See, it's angles like this that just remind me that Snake as a family line has a weirdly defined ass. And I don't mean that his ass looks weird, I mean they put a lot of effort to <laughs> defining the ridges of his ass. It's the sort of thing that once you notice it once, you can't unsee it. Kept you waiting, huh? And now we're gonna get indulgent into the uh, throwback quotes and key for Sutherland. I'm not sure what it is, but I, I gotta say, Keeper Sutherland's voice, he, he sounds like a stepdad. But, but then again, he looks like one too. Hideo Kojima. I'm making this game no matter how fucking expensive it gets. I'm getting Keeper Sutherland. Million dollar salary. Chico and 
pods are being held in an old unused Man, the, the more car. fucking technology they show it's off, the more it's just like, Mailing didn't invent shit with the Soliton radar! Look at this stuff! Chico. Chico. I'm listening to my tunes, bro! Ah, oh, why are you giving me the seizures? You know I got epilepsy. That's what happens when you showed me that crap from Japan. What was that stuff? That Astro Boy. I was seizuring on the ground for years. That's why I'm so short. I still blame you for that, boss. Go away! This is a very strange scene when I first saw it. By the way, sweet uh, variation on a chokehold. So yeah, potential brain damage. Whatever, he's a kid, he can recover. But yeah, that's a very strange cutscene out of context. Because you don't really get firm context on a lot of this stuff until much later on. But there's this tape I found. Pretty sure. Is Chico able to walk? Ah, this fucking detail is gruesome, the more you think about it. Even just cutting the fucking back of these tendons is brutal. But Jesus, this.